but a, a stride length that you can rotate from. So this position is really good for guys who have good hip internal rotation, good thoracic rotation, and they're generally pretty mobile. What's going on guys, Ben Brewster here, triathletics.com. This is the rhythm rocker drill. Um, so this is a drill that works on weight shift for your lower half. Um, where it places in the scheme of backwards chaining is somewhere in the middle. So after you've worked on your arm action, after you've worked on the sequencing of your torso to your pelvis, um, now we're gonna add a little, a little bit of a weight shift component and see if we can maintain that same sequencing. So this comes after your arm action drills and basic uh, hip shoulder dissociation drills, but before something like a roll in or a walk and wind up where you're incorporating that linear momentum. So it's kind of a bridge between the two. Now this is kind of a controlled version of the rocker where we can add some of that weight shift and still be able to sequence it into the rest of the throw before we, again, take these bits and pieces uh, of the delivery and challenge your patterns uh, as you go through that sequence. So we're trying to make sure that the patterns and, and what we're working on from a drill, uh, drill standpoint are sticking at each phase of this backwards chaining process from arm action drills to your full delivery. And again, we're taking little bite-sized chunks as we go through it. So the rhythm rocker is that bridge. Uh, the leg lift rocker, which is a separate video, is that more sports specific rocker drill, which some of you might get in your programs as well. Uh, so some of the cues we talk about with the rhythm rocker drill, we wanna make sure as you get into landing, the hips are segmenting ahead of the shoulders, front shoulders closed, elbows up at 90 degrees, neutral wrist, and that we're driving downhill through the ball rather than pushing or rotating uphill. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're smooth, controlled, uh, fluid through these patterns. It's not about muscling the ball. Make sure when you're talking about selecting ball weights uh, that you don't go too heavy on this drill. That can lead to a little bit of a choppy arm action. It can lead to pushing. It can lead to muscling up with the arm path. So typically we're looking somewhere in the five ounce range, which is a yellow plyo ball, uh, seven ounce, which is a red plyo ball, all the way up to maybe a one pound plyo ball. Typically we won't go any heavier than that. Uh, and then another cue that we will touch on, as you'll see in a demo in a second, is letting the hips and that front heel free up a little bit. So as you're rocking, the hips are free. It's not the feet stuck in sand as we're rotating back and forth. It's letting that heel come up and letting those hips be free and athletic as we move through the drill. So again, just more dynamic uh, drill variation where we can work on the timing and the sequencing of everything. Here's an example of the basic rhythm rocker. Uh, when we talk about foot position, there's two different foot, foot positions that will play around with certain guys. The first is just pelvis facing straight to the target, both feet facing straight ahead, and we're in a little bit shorter than your full stride, but a, a stride length that you can rotate from. So this position is really good for guys who have good hip internal rotation, good thoracic rotation, and they're generally pretty mobile. They need to focus on getting those hips open into landing, and they can separate pretty well, just starting with all the toes facing forward. So here's what that would look like. Rock back from the back toe to the back heel, come up on the front heel and rotate down. So it's just a subtle move to the heel, let that front toe come up, keep the hips square, close off the shoulders. From here, rotate down into landing and get downhill. So that's the first variation of the rhythm rocker drill. Uh, this next one, all you're gonna do is turn that back foot even with the rubber, cheat that front foot open a little bit and this is that new starting position for the second variation. This works better for guys who have a little bit uh, more of a uh, hip external rotation, a dominant back leg. Um, so they're guys who get more of that snapping down action from that vertical shin into landing versus guys that kind of separate early. Um, so this is a good variation that works for them, cheating that front foot open before you start the drill. All right, so this version of the rhythm rocker, all we're gonna do is, again, simple rock back, turn the hips, close off the hips, close off the shoulders, and from here, we're trying to let the hips lead the way, and then, again, shoulders get downhill, so it looks like this. Again, notice that I'm not just spinning my hips open like this, I'm trying to rotate down into landing, so my, my thought from this slight rock I'm loading it to my back glute, I'm freeing up the hips, freeing up that front heel, closing off the pelvis. So from here, pelvis closed, upper half closed, I'm thinking about rotating down into landing with my pelvis, 
while keeping the upper, upper half closed. So that's the main difference between this variation and the last one is everything's closed off and then it goes versus hips stay open the whole time and only the upper half closes off. That's the main difference between the two. And then finally, the third variation of this is a figure eight rhythm rocker. Uh, so we find this works really well when guys still don't quite get the hang of it. Maybe the elbow's low, maybe they're digging into their lat as they rotate, maybe they're rotating uphill, they're not getting downhill through their rotation, maybe they're spinning the hips. Uh, we find that the figure eight version really helps sink the arm into the proper plane and get that elbow even with the shoulders before they begin to rotate. So the figure eight version is the same as the second version. All you're doing is adding a forward figure eight and a backward figure eight. And as that arm begins to descend backwards, you're gonna sync that up with the rock back. I'm syncing this rock with this arm swing in this type of motion. So a full speed looks like this. You notice I'm letting those hips free up, I'm letting that front heel come off, and I'm making sure that I'm smooth and I'm sinking that arm swing, that loose arm swing up the spiral. And I'm coordinating that with that back hip going and everything from here. Notice it's in the same position as the second version of this drill. Everything's uh, directed towards downhill rotation. One more time. All right, there you have it guys. Those are the three variations of the rhythm rocker. Uh, we will kind of experiment with all three variations depending on the guy, uh, but again, I would encourage you to Try all of these, see which version feels the most comfortable, and incorporate that into the right part of your routine as kind of the bridge between your arm action drills and your hip shoulder separation drills and your actual sports specific walk and wind ups, uh, delivery, long toss, bullpen, all the uh, full delivery drills that you have.